This podcast has been brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Help us spread the light of prophetic guidance to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Make a small donation at seekersguidance.org forward slash donate. For as little as $10 a month, you can help people find life-changing guidance. وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما تعلمنا زدنا من فضلك علما وعملا يا أرحم الراحمين وقربا يا أكرم الأكرمين اللهم زدنا ولا تنقصنا وأكرمنا ولا تهنا وأعطنا ولا تحرمنا وآثرنا ولا تؤثر علينا وأرضنا يا أرحم الراحمين وارض عنا يا أكرم الأكرمين Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So, we, <coughs> we were looking at uh, the comments of Bani Israel saying that, the, the, you know, غلف, that our hearts are covered in many layers. So, saying to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa that your guidance can't reach us. Basically, we're not interested. So, we continue with looking at their information, you know, their, their attitude towards revelation. And, you know, um, although it's all concentrated here, <coughs> as I said, this surah was revealed over 10 years. So it's, uh, a lot of these ayat were due to the interactions they had with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And, <coughs> you know, the attempt at supporting uh, the enemies of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Enemies of the truth, you know, of, of God. And... Um, you know, uh, trying to kill the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam despite having treaties and, you know. So, <clears throat> the ayat continue. Uh, the ayat continue. And so, we, we see Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, so continuing from, um, continuing from uh, what they, uh, they last said, you know, another, <clears throat> another, one, of, another one of their rebellious you know, streaks. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَمَّا جَاءُهُمْ كِتَابٌ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ right? When a tremendous book came to them from Allah, مُصَدِّقٌ لِمَا مَعَهُمْ وَكَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ يَسْتَفْتِحُونَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا فَلَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ مَا عَرَفُوا كَفَرُوا بِهِ فَلَعْنَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ And when they came to them a book from Allah confirming that which, that which was with them, although before they used to pray for victory against those who disbelieved, but uh, but when they, but when they came to them that which they recognized, they disbelieved in it. So the curse of Allah will be upon the disbelievers, right? So interesting. Um, let's look at this and we'll add to this translation. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "When they came to them, they had a book from Allah." And <clears throat> and when a book came to them from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a tremendous, it's kitabun, it's indefinite, sure, it's a huge, tremendous, amazing, you know, book full of guidance and light and benefit and wisdom, right? Why, you know, right? So it's it's huge in its, in its worth and its rank and its superiority over other books, over other books of revelation as well. And then, look, the word, it's interesting, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the word ja'a, which means, in some context, it means something which is coming slowly, which is not the case here. Or that which is coming is great, right? So it's like making an entrance, right? So it's huge, right? This, this amazing, huge. So it's the word Ja'a shows that it's tremendous. And then the word Kitabun, it's indefinite, shows this, this Quran is tremendous. And then, min <clears throat> indi from the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself, has chosen this book and selected the book and revealed this book. So it's great because of it. In, it's great intrinsically. It, the Quran itself is great. And because it's come from Allah, that's another reason to make it even great, right? In the end, Allah, the being of absolute perfection you know, and all the qualities of greatness, right? And <clears throat> so it's, it's a description that the Quran came to them and because it's from Allah, they should have accepted it. Because it's tremendous and full of guidance and wisdom and light, they should have accepted it, right? That's what's expected, right? So what happens? And this book, not only that, it, and the state of this book is, the hal, the general state is, it's musaddiq, it, um, 
is that it affirms that which they already have with them. What does it mean? <coughs> the Quran, what the Torah said, the Quran affirms it, saying that what was in there is true, right? And what was the Torah saying? I mean, here from this context, we'll see that the Torah, the Torah was given the uh, <coughs> the description of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He's like this. He looks like this. These are his features. This, this is what his personality is like. These are his deeds. These are the deeds of his followers. In all of these things, right? Like we see in the end of uh, Surah Al-Fatih, Muhammad Rasulullah, Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah, walladhina ma'ahu ashidda'u, the whole discussion of what the, the sign of it, of his, you know, um, of the Prophet was, sallallahu alayhi wa what his descriptions are, um, is mentioned there, and ذَلِكَ مَثَلُهُمْ فِي Torah. that's the tremendous similitude of them in the Torah, and then the similitude that of the Prophet and his companions in the Injil or Muslim fil Injil Kazarin is mentioned there. So it was all you know revealed to them and explained to them, right? And so he said Musadiqul Lima Ma'ahum, right? And it affirms the Quran affirms that which they already have with them, right? And what's interesting, Imam Alusi, who's also a tremendous Mufassir of the Quran, he, his tafsir is it's kind of like a commentary on the tafsir of Abu Saud, but he's in no way, he's not a sheep, right? You know, he's got his own strong personality and insight, and, you know, fantastic tafsir. So Imam Alusi says here that the Quran, it doesn't say that the Torah also affirms and corroborates what's in the Quran. Why? Because the Quran is independent, it's so great, the, the text itself speaks to its own truth, right? It's especially for someone that understands Arabic, especially at their level, right? You know, through study, we can get to a point that you can look at the Quran and say, right, this is not like any other Arab, 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 Arabic speech or text. So the Quran challenges, you know, replicated, nothing can, so therefore it's from God. And you can see that through study, but for them, it was something innate, right? It was automatic, you know, their, their, <clears throat> you know, their very souls would recognize this, right? And so, you yeah, know, it doesn't mention that you know the Torah affirms corroborates it, yeah. Wakanu and so the the book has come, and <clears throat> the book has come, and what is their state? How have they? How are they when the book comes? Their state when the book comes is that for a long time, Wakanu uh, min qabl, right? From just before it came to way back, right? Uh, uh, they were seeking victory or uh, uh, they were seeking victory so it said, um, although before they used to pray for victory against those who disbelieved right they were seeking victory through the Torah and through the Prophet that's missing in the translation right and it should have been in the translation right so that's you know so because the text clearly implies it right no. <clears throat> no. <clears throat> no. <clears throat> right. Um right? Is is implied that they would seek victory um through the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? And you know so what's the what's his historical context to this, right? We've we've got many narrations, right? One of them, for example, from Asim ibn Amr ibn Qatada al Ansari, the famous Sahabi. And you know, many of the <clears throat> the people of the Ansar they used to say that before Islam came to Medina, <coughs> like I said, <coughs> the Jews were allied with the Arabs, uh, with Aus and Khazraj, but at times they would fight, they would end up fighting each other, right? So it was just a whole mess. Sometimes the friends, sometimes the enemies and all sorts, right? Frenemies. And sometimes they'd be good <coughs> having all these uh, discussions <coughs> and arguments with each other and fighting. <coughs> and they would say Right, they would say they would you keep saying this to uh, to the pagan Arabs, the kafaru, the disbelievers, the pagans and Arabs of Medina, that <clears throat> the time has come for the final prophet. When he comes, we're gonna follow him and we're gonna butcher you, we're gonna kill you like Ad and Thamud were killed. These previous nations who were destroyed because of their rejection 
of uh, the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you know the signs and the proof and you know this rebellion just like they were killed we're going to kill you that they were saying this so basically they're saying God's on our side and you know we're gonna you know when he you know when the messenger comes we're gonna uh, we're gonna kill you that's what they were saying right and <clears throat> the problem was when the messenger came what did they do they just believe we look at that but um, so so the issue here is that وَكَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ يَسْتَفْتِحُونَ a fath. It's where the the root of this word comes from. A fath literally means opening, but here it means uh, it's it's a decisive decision, right? So basically, you know, we're we're fighting with these people, and so we want a decisive closing of this issue, right? Oh Allah, give us victory, saying, they were saying, right? So it says, you know, they were saying, oh Allah, give us victory. We ask you through your prophet, right? We ask you through the final prophet who's described in the Torah, give us victory over these people. So they're using the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa in their du'as to ask for victory, right? So they can defeat their enemy. That also, that's what they were doing. That's what it means. So fath is this. So it's like something's locked and this issue just can't, won't go away. And then you ask for a fath, for an opening. So it's like the problem solved. It's like something's been opened after it's been locked and closed for a long time, right? And then you go the yes stuff. Yes, the ist at the beginning. Like you say istaghfara, right? So that's in the word, which means that they would go out of their way with all the effort. And you know, there's a lot of you know struggling and striving and really pleading before Allah oh Allah for the sake of this prophet for your love for this prophet by the right of this prophet who's described in the Torah give us you know yes right <clears throat> so the books of tafsir mention this very clearly that they would it was, it was through the prophet so it should really be in that transition <clears throat> so the, you know they were seeking this victory over those who disbelieve So then the ayah says, so the when is repeated here. So in, in Arabic, basically, if when you start a discussion <clears throat> and you need to finish it off, um, but when you start a discussion, so if I said to you, when, uh, when I came to you last Thursday, I couldn't come on Friday. Uh, I was busy with work and I was, you know, I had to do a few things and, you know, and and then I go off on a tangent or to give detail about something, not a tangent, but when I start giving detail about something, about when something happened, just to refresh your mind, it's mentioned again, when, right? So when I came to that, and then I say, when I came, I gave you this gift, for example, right? So that's why it says, walamma is mentioned again, walamma ja'ahum, and you know to, to really emphasize what they'd been doing as well before right all these you know, for such a long time that's what they kept doing kanu right kanu mean qablu ala it was their it was their you know their habit regular practice so a prophet will come and we believe in him and you know they're thinking that yes you know we're going to we're going to come out on top we're, we're the chosen people right so then what happens falamma ja'ahum ma arafu and then what they recognized when that came to them, when they came to them, what they recognized, what, what would they recognize, right? They would clearly recognize the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How would they recognize him, right? That's one point. <clears throat> they would recognize him through the description in the Torah, right? <clears throat> and I mentioned this before. One of the signs is that, you know, Allah would be quoted in the text. Allah would say to the Messenger, say, and then you tell him what to say. We have that in the Quran. That's that's there in the Old Testament. Even now, you can you can find it, right? And that he's a messenger like Moses. How is he like Moses, right? No, the messenger after Musa alayhi salatu salam that went to Bani Israel is like Musa alayhi salam more than the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, right? And you know, <clears throat> both were given the law. Both were you know had to lead you know um, you know these groups of people. Both had to leave their homeland. There's many aspects in which they're similar, right? And so it's still there. It's still there. So you're saying when they came to them, what they recognized, i.e. this individual who is clearly a messenger because he's... The book that they're saying, we believe in, this is our book. It says he's in there. It's just like this. And that's how they are. Um, if you want proof, you've got uh, Salman al-Farisi. 
he, you know, he was following people of, of these scriptures, going from teacher to teacher to teacher. And then, you know, he saw the signs, the, the seal of Prophet, uh, you know, between the shoulder blades of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He knew he would, he would accept a gift, but he wouldn't eat from anything that's charity. He went one day, gave some food, he said, Ya Rasulullah, take this, it's charity. And then the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, took it and gave it to his companions, eat. He didn't touch it himself, and the next day he went and he gave some more, and he said, this is a gift. And the Prophet ate. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from that food and shared it with others. So it's very clear. There are many, many, many signs, right? They recognize it. And another thing, and when they came to them, what they recognized, what else? The Book of Allah. It's clear that this is the Book of Allah, Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. The confidence and the power with, with which the Quran speaks, the, the miracles within it, the signs, things no one else knew that were hidden, you know, in their scrolls and their scriptures. Which they kept secret, Allah's telling it out there in front of everyone, as we've seen, right? So, <clears throat> and then there's the language of the Quran, the power of the Quran, the beauty of the Quran, the other miracles that the Prophet had, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, which supported the, you know, uh, the claim of the Quran that is from Allah subhanahu wa taala. فَلَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ عَرَفُوا and so when so before they were asking oh Allah because of this Prophet give us victory because of this Prophet, and you know. Uh, and when the book came and they'd been doing so, so what Allah SWT is saying when this book came to them and before they'd been you know begging Allah for victory because of the Prophet through the Prophet and then when the book and the Prophet both come kafarubi immediately right it's like we don't have anything to do with this right except for the you know the the, the true and the sincere and the honest amongst them like Abdul Ibn Salam and uh, others uh, but <clears throat> rejected it kafarubi right. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَعْنَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ So because of that, may the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be on al-kafirin, right? So this al, uh, so the kafirin, the disbelievers, but al here has <coughs> has a meaning of, uh, it's alul kamal, so like those who are firmly rooted in their disbelief and not changing, you know, it's this is their permanent description, right? Allah al kafirin. Which kafirin? There are people that disbelieve for other reasons. Some disbelief disbelieve in the existence of God. They say it doesn't exist. Some disbelieve uh, in you know through various other means, right? Clearly, the kafirin is meant is these people for their kufr, right? When the messenger came, we don't have anything to do with him, right? For Instead of saying, so may the curse of Allah be upon them, he's saying, may the curse of Allah be upon the kafirin. For two reasons. One, to show it's a general rule, right? Unless one of them decides to repent, turn back to Allah, and accept the truth and follow it. It doesn't apply then. Allah, Allah is willing to wipe away everything. You just have to come sincerely on Allah's terms and accept what he's told you to accept, right? And for that, kafirin. And the other reason is, so it applies to everyone who, who fits the description. And the second thing is that it applies to them. And it's the reason why they're getting the curse. Because of the kufr. That's why they're getting cursed. Not for any other reason. For la'natullahi ala al-kafirin. Right? And we explained what a la'na is. Right? We explained what a curse is. That it's, it's being distanced from the mercy and the kindness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala something which everyone needs in this life and we certainly will need it in the akhirah and so because of your choices you shut that door on yourselves that's what he's saying right and like I said the, the Quran is not here to to just uh, dish out criticism and that's it no each of these is a reminder for everyone, don't be like this, don't do these things, and if you have done these things, you've got a chance now. Stop, change, do something about it. Adriku Amfusakum, right? As you say in Arabic, rescue yourself, save yourselves, right? It's not, you know, it's not too late, you still have an opportunity, and this is from Allah's mercy, right? But if they don't want it, they've, they've been blocked off from it, right? Holy Azabillah. So then the ayah, uh, the next ayah continues. بِئْسَ مَا اشْتَرَوْا بِهِ أَنفُسَهُمْ أَنْ يَكْفُرُوا بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ بَغْيًا أَنْ يُنَزِلَ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ عَلَى مَا يَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ 
وباءوا بغضب على غضب وللكافرين عذاب مهين How wretched is that for which they have sold themselves that they would disbelieve in Allah yeah, in what Allah has revealed through the outrage that Allah would send down his favor upon Allah and Allah would send his favor down upon whom he was from his servants so they returned having earned wrath upon wrath and for the disbelievers is a humiliating punishment may Allah protect us so <clears throat> let's start with this so straight away to the criticism right so the word bitsa there are two particular words in arabic ni'ma and bitsa and the opposite meaning <clears throat> so ni'ma has you say ni'ma al-abdu zayd right uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it about you know other prophets ni'ma al-abd about ayyub inna wajadnahu sabiran we, we found him to be truly patient ni'ma al-abd oh, an excellent servant he is right so ni'ma has this meaning of you'd use the word because in, in any every single word of praise you can you have that you can say anyway you can compliment something praise something it's all in there it's the most comprehensive word for praise one of the awliya said you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ni'ma rabbu anta you know what an excellent excellent lord you are right because all of the meanings of praise are included in this obviously sometimes detailing it is, is more eloquent and better but ni'ma its opposite is bi'sa just listen to the sound bi'sa it's a sharp sharp harsh sound bi bi'sa it just shows it's like you know it's what disgusting right it's every single statement you can say of criticism and blame and censure right yeah well not censure and criticism and blame uh, you know and you know disgust towards something is all included within bi'sa bi'sa ma sharaw bihi and bi'sa ma sharaw bihi and fusahum how terrible how vile how disgusting how low how base how wretched is that for which they sold themselves right so we talked about this concept of in Allah hashtara min al mu'minina amwalahum wa anfusahum right Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has purchased Allah <clears throat> Allah has purchased from the believers their own their, their properties and their own selves so it's like here you are and you sell yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the the you know what you get in exchange so you're the you're the you're the price which, which is being paid and what you get in return is paradise right this tremendous garden but here what have they done they've sold themselves sharo ishtaro interesting word in arabic it has the meaning of buying and to and of selling so the context usually ishtaro would be like how it's ended up say in the books of law it's like ishtaro is, is for buying and ba'u is for selling right but it has, in validly you can use it in both ways the context you know um uh, clarifies so here the context is in they've sold the, the uh, their own souls themselves and <clears throat> you know unfortunately the word unfortunately is plural of nafs one of its meanings that is it comes from the word connected to purity and preciousness actually not purity but preciousness and they should see the potential that they have and that's precious but wasting it is it's like you know throwing diamonds in the bin right so <clears throat> so what a terrible thing they've sold their own selves for right uh Allah so what have they done so Bitsa mashtarao bihi anfusahum, right? What they sold themselves for? Fame, reputation, right? If a prophet comes and, you know, if, if, if he's not a Jew, then we lose our monopoly, right? Firstly, they would have accepted a, a prophet from Bani Israel anyway, right? Look how many they've killed in the past, right? The problem is, you know, if he's a prophet, where do we go? Where's our position in society? Everything that we know is tantamount to nil because, you know, maybe it's been, you know, it, there's a new new Sharia, right? You may know the Torah inside out, 
but when the Quran comes, your knowledge of the Torah isn't very helpful. Maybe in a few things here and there, clarifying certain things that need detail that, that you know uh, would require a bit of detail in the Quran, which the Prophet is there for. So, what, what, what use would you be? So, we have the same thing. Uh, Amir, right? Uh, who's, who's the prophet so there's one called amir who who in medina and he was like saying i'm a man of of revelation or of, of knowledge and i know the previous scriptures and all this and when the prophet came he disbelieved right whereas his knowledge of that should have made him accept it why because where's he gonna go now who wants to know him right once the prophet has come so it's like that's that was in his mind right the father of hanzala who was a famous Sahabi? He got married the night before the Battle of Uhud, and then so he went out uh, in a state of janab by needing a bath, and then he was martyred at the battle. And then the angels gave him his his ghusl. They washed him. So this was the attitude, right? So for, for their fame and for this thing that we are the chosen people and we have, you know, uh, the prophets come from us. That's what their problem is. Bit so much terrible. How terrible it is! What they sold, you know, the thing they sold their own souls for, exchange it for, so their souls and the, the potential benefit and everything uh, that they gave away um, in exchange of uh, where you know where important people, right? So you know, and yakfuru because what? Uh, what did they do? Uh, and yakfuru bima anzal Allahu. Yeah, baghyan, right? You know, because they they disbelieved baghyan. So baghi is re, re, rebelliousness. It's been translated here is um, outrage, right? Like out of outrage. So it's so baghi. Why is this baghi, right? This why were they feeling like this? So they realized that he's not an Arab. That's where the main problem was. And what were they saying before? This is so this stems from their arrogance. Because they were saying, We're gonna when the Prophet comes, we're gonna follow him. Right? Why would they follow him? Because he's a prophet? No. Because he's bringing the truth? No. Because he's bringing revelation from God? No. Because they're commanded to follow him in the Torah? No. For their own gain. Right? Now we're gonna follow him and we're going to, just so they end up on top, and we're going to kill you. That's what they were saying to the Arabs, right, to the idolaters. What happened? He comes, he's not an Arab. Who looks like the fool now, right? Now we're going to follow him, and then it turns out well, we, can't, uh, we can't follow him, he's an Arab. So because now, you know, they feel like, you know, we look like fools, the arrogance is so much that they think, we're not going to follow him then. You know, we were supposed to follow him, but we can't follow someone that's not, that's not from the children of Ishaq. So therefore, we won't follow him, right? So the arrogance is making them feel angry that he's not, you know, he's not one of us. So, you know, they're literally expecting one of their sons to turn up one day and say, right, I'm the prophet, right? So uh, they're angry and there's hasad, right? Hasad, I mean, Indian Fusim, as we'll see later, there's jealousy. So jealousy, so hasad is not best translated as jealousy, but there's no particular word for it. But it's, <clears throat> it means, hasad means, you see someone else has something and you wish for them to lose it. Regardless of whether you want it or not, that's not discussed, that's not the issue here. The issue is he or you know she or someone has something, I want I want them to lose it. Allah's given them that something out of his generosity, right? And then they're like, I don't want this, I don't want this person to have this thing. They don't want the Arabs to have an Arab messenger because they've been fighting these Arabs. That's the simple thing, right? Hasad Amin Indi sorry. Uh, so you know because they disbelieved in what Allah has uh, sent down right so it's saying that you know it's it's also interesting you know saying what well, Allah this tremendous you know ultimate being the supreme being Allah their God he sent this down the same one who sent down the Torah the same one who gave them that uh, guidance right and you know subhanallah right uh and it's just baghi, it's just this rebellion. Why? Uh, you know, they disbelieved in this. Why? Uh, because Allah sent down min fadlihi from his generosity, from his fadl, his vast, you know, gener generous 
nature, his, his generosity, he gave, uh, he chose someone to bestow this, you know, preeminent rank of you are my final messenger. He chose, you know, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And no one else is more, deserved. the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was created for this role, right? So Allah chose him and created him for this in this way. And, you know, min fadli is beautiful. You know, Allah commands us, was Allah min fadli. Ask Allah to give to you through his generosity, right? So it is huge, vast, infinite generosity. Allah chose this. And you know, Allah min fadlihi ala man yasha'u min ibadi. That Allah chose to reveal the Quran to whoever he wants to select and give importance and greatness to from his his servants. They, you're all his servants and Allah chose someone. It's his choice. He doesn't owe you anything. It's not a case of like, for example, a father and he's got children and okay, he should be fair in giving gifts to the children. No, no it's not that. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is selecting someone to perform a function and he's going to choose the best person. He's created him for this purpose. So they're getting upset with this. Allah an yinazil Allah min fadlihi ala man yasha'u min ibadi. So what happens? Faba'u bi ghadabin. And just listen to the dad, the ghada, right? Uh, and, and the gha together. The ghain uh, is, it has isti'la uh, yeah, here. You lift the back of your tongue. And the dad, and the dad has another attribute. We raise the middle of the tongue with it. Ghada, right? Faba'u bi ghadabin. And it's indefinite. Ghadabin. Ala ghadab. So they ended up, they returned to their state. They, where are they? They have ghadab, anger from Allah, on top of anger. So they previously angered Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with all their kufr and you know insulting Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu salam and killing all their prophets and doing all, you know hiding the truth, chasing, changing revelation. That's all there. And on top of that comes more anger. Ghadabin ala ghadab. That's what they chose. Right? Walil kafirin and the disbelievers. Which disbelievers? Right? So here is saying that this is the reason why they're going to get this punishment for their kufr. And they're firmly rooted in this. And it's a general rule. Anyone that does their deeds, chooses their way, gets this. Right? You know, and this is God speaking. Right? Uh, you know, it's not some, you know, it's, it's God's ruling. Right? So walil kafirin a'zabun. And the, the kafirin, the disbelievers, will have a punishment. Right, and you have to, to to understand this talk of punishment. You have to see who is it coming from, who is it coming from. Just like you know, a court would you know, if you go to court and you start making you know fun out of the you know the funny wigs uh, that the judges uh, judge and the the barristers are wearing, you know, if you think, oh look at your robes and look at, it, they're gonna say they're gonna hold you in contempt of court, and there's a you know you can get you know, imprisoned for that, you can get punished for that, right? So, because why something has a, has a particular status and a rank, and this is Allah Himself, right? So, you know, what do you expect? Uh, and they have a humiliating punishment, right? And they're going to be humiliated for this, because what? Because they think, you know, because Al-Jaza'a min Jinsil Amal, they think we're so great, we are too important, right? Full of arrogance that, you know, they, why should we follow this Arab? We are superior, we're the chosen, lifting themselves up, making, you know, thinking that we're great. So what happens? Allah knows them, humiliated with that punishment, because they wrongfully put their own arrogance above God. They preferred that to following the revelation of God. It was their choice, their choice, right? So we'll end this discussion here and we'll continue with uh, the next uh, ayat. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Thank you for listening. This podcast was brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Visit seekersguidance.org to access reliable Islamic knowledge taught by qualified teachers. We offer a wide range of courses, podcasts, articles, and a world-class answer service. Support us in spreading free, reliable Islamic knowledge to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Visit seekersguidance.org forward slash donate and make a small monthly commitment today. Our beloved Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Whoever guides someone to goodness 
will have a similar reward. So don't forget to share this podcast and spread prophetic guidance.